Good morning. This is Kurt Ness with Ness Brothers Realtors and Auctioneers. I'm calling or doing this about an hour earlier because I have a meeting at 8.30 this morning that I'm going to be working with a charity doing their auction. So what I've been trying to do these last couple of weeks is talk about how our 55 plus relocation service can help make transition easy. And one of the things that we try to do is to educate people on some of the challenges they may make or encounter so that when they reach them, they're not going to panic as much. Last week, what we talked about when we're talking about making this transition is that it is important to get your finances in order so that somebody knows exactly where you keep that information. Recently, I was invited onto the Board of Visiting Nurse, and one of the pieces of information that they have that I thought was very useful is planning for today and tomorrow. I got a stack of these uh, from Visiting Nurse, so if anybody wants one of these booklets, just uh, reach out to me and I'll make sure that I get it mailed to you. But the nice thing about this booklet is that it gathers all this information in one location. It covers things, obviously, like your personal information, family, health, and medication. Also, special needs, dealing with the pets, the veterinarian contact information, any pet medication instructions. Again, information like your birth certificate, social security, driver's license, passport, bank statements are all uh, useful information along with your financial information and schedule of payments. So what this does is it's, it's a nice place to have all this information in, in one location. So if you want this, just give me a call or email me or uh, text me and we'll get it to you. So this week, we're going to talk about what to do with my stuff. And a lot of times when people are making that transition, they're going from a 2,000 square foot home to maybe moving in with relatives or a villa or even assisted living, and they might be going down to as far as 700 square feet. I had a situation last year that a woman collected dolls and she had over 170 dolls in this collection. In fact, one bedroom all had shelving, multi uh, levels of shelving that was just with the dolls. And so what we asked her when we m met was, what were the top five dolls that you liked? Well, it didn't take her long to select those five. And so what we stated was, why don't we do this? Let's take a picture of all the remaining dolls and we can put them into some type of a scrapbook. Those five dolls are what you're going to take with you. And so by doing that, we were able to still allow her to have a piece of that doll collection, but it was a lot, took up a lot less space than a bedroom in this, uh, that she had it in. She was still able to have her five dolls that she liked the, the most. And then we liquidated the dolls through an online auction. When you're looking at getting rid of your stuff, you have to have a plan. And the easiest way is to start, take one room at a time and look at that room and say, of the items in this room, what is the most valuable to me? Valuable from not necessarily a monetary value, but an emotional value. And do you have the space to take that item with your next move? If you do not, then the next question is, do you have a family member that you would really like to see get this item? Now, I'm going to tell you one thing that becomes a quick reality when you're talking to your children. Example, I've got antique furniture. My children are not into antique furniture. And our antique furniture, to be honest with you, did not come from a prior family member. Now, my wife has some dishes that have been passed down two generations. And so on those items, what we're trying to do is literally write a little history about that piece of uh, pottery or, or dishes, how it came from Carolyn's great aunt, and a little history about that aunt, and attaching it to the dish, and then 
the goal is to pass it on to, to a family member. So this is one way to kind of keep that tradition going. Also, by again going back to taking one room at a time, you don't feel overwhelmed and, and most people can tackle one room and you just systematically go through your house one room at a time um, like that. Now everything has, uh, there's variables. Variable number one is how much time do you have? Variable number two is are you physically able to, to do this or do you have to rely on other family members? And so we're going to touch on that in the next uh, talk I'm going to do uh, a week from now. But again, the goal is to, our goal is to educate you, create a plan, and then execute that plan. Thank you and have a great day.